Hello, this is Bram from Admire with a short demonstration on the DSpace policy wildcard tool. If you haven't heard of this tool, let me first show you where you can find it. We're logging in using uh, one of the demo credentials on demo.dspace.org slash xmlui that runs a DSpace 6 on the Mirage 2 theme but the feature itself is already in DSpace for quite a few versions and it hasn't been changed that much so on your DSpace uh, 5, 4 and 3 this should look very similar so I'm logged in as an administrator and I find my way in the context menu to the area that says authorizations so when I hit that I see this quite invisible link saying advanced authorizations tool click here to go to the item wildcard policy admin tool which is the one that I want to show you today the user interface is a bit daunting and confusing so I want to give you a few pointers on what you can do with this you can add policies to items and bit streams or you can remove policies from items and bit streams that's all it does you cannot use it to ma manipulate policies on collections and communities or other types of objects. It's only on items and bit streams. Let's first discuss the use case of adding policies to items or bit streams. Say a description for this policy is new uh, bit stream policy or my bit stream policy. And this field will be stored in the description field of the new policy that you're adding. Next thing that you need to do is to select a group uh, where it applies to. And I created a, a group for this demonstration, a wildcard test group. And then I have to select the action. Each policy is associated with an action, but not actually not all of these actions make sense on an item or on a bitstream. Let's just say that I want to give um, read rights, which is the most common one. Um, so to allow this group, this wildcard test group, to have read rights on uh, bit streams, that's what I'm doing right now. And then the last thing that you select, or not the last thing, the next thing, is that you select a specific collection. And if you choose a collection, it will be applied to all of the bit streams in all of the items of that collection. And then you can set a start date and an end date. If you leave those blank, it's just a policy without start dates or end dates. If you put a read policy with a start date in the future, that's actually the same thing as applying an embargo because the read policy will only take effect after a specific date. A uh, read policy with an end date, that's a little bit a weird scenario. I don't know what it would apply to, but you could say, okay, I want this read policy to expire next week, after which it will no longer have effect. So this is enough, and this allows me to add the policies. Another drawback of this tool is that it doesn't give you a big feedback screen or anything. I just click Add Policies, and then I get to a screen I actually just get sent back to the authorization uh, screen so that can be could be improved in future versions but the thing did take effect so the next use case for the same tool um, that I want to share with you is the use case of removing rights or removing policies from uh, bit streams or uh, items and that is done with this button that says clear policies but unlike the add policy thing, it's very important to know for clear policies that only, um, only two things matter. The selection of the item type, let's say Bitstream, and then I do this Bibliotecas Electronica collection, and then I say clear policies, and then I've effectively cleared all of the policies on those objects in that collection. It does not take into account the selection of the um, group name that you made or the selection of the action. So it's really clear policies is really a, a blunt clear everything from the objects that I selected. And just to just to check it out, I'm going to those uh, Bibliotecas Electronica collection 
and I actually don't remember whether I selected items or bit streams. Um, there's nothing visible here. So it might not even contain items, this collection. Yeah, so that was maybe not the best um, best example then. But just try it out on uh, in, an, in a test environment or uh, see whether this works on, on your dev server on your, or on your test server first before you do this in production. If you know these tricks, it's a pretty handy tool, but uh, there's been a lot of mistakes using that clear, uh, clear policies button, so hence this video. Thanks a lot for watching.